Abu Mihjan al thaqafi رضي الله تعالى عنه, was a companion of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. He was an alcoholic. And subhanAllah, he even used to write poetry about his khamr. And one of the things in his wasiyah, in his will to his children, he said, if I die, I want you to soak my grave with khamr so that my bones can absorb it. Talk about an addict. He even had a qasida for it. When he became Muslim, he had a very hard time kicking his alcohol habit. And subhanAllah, he was present in the battles with the Prophet ﷺ. He was with the ummah, but he would routinely be last because he kept getting caught drunk. And this was something that continued even through the khilaf of Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, even as he became an old man in the khilaf of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu. Then in the khilaf of Umar bin Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as the Muslims were at war with the Persians in the battle of Qadisiyah, fighting that great oppressor of Kisra, liberating even the people of Persia from their ruler and from their emperor, he was drunk again. And Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu was the commander of the army. He had to lash him again. And then when the battle of Qadisiyah started, you know what the punishment of Abu Mihjan radiallahu ta'ala anhu was? You will be chained up while we go fight the battle of Qadisiyah. You don't get to go out and fight against the Persians and serve your ummah. Abu Mihjan cried and cried and cried. And he begged Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu, do not forbid me from serving Allah. I know I messed up. Give me another chance. Don't forbid me from serving Allah. I know I have a problem with khamr. But don't forbid me from serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of you are addicted to pornography. Some of you are addicted to a sin. But you still love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you love the Messenger sallallahu But the problem is that you're not allowing that love of Allah and His Messenger to do away with that sin. It doesn't mean you don't love Allah and His Messenger. But you need to kick the habit. You need to put it aside. It's ittiba' that Allah wants from you, following that Allah wants from you. So Sa'ad radiallahu anhu said, look, I can't deal with you anymore. I'll deal with you after the battle of Qadisiyah. So he ties up Abu Mihjan in a chamber right next to his house. And as he leaves for the battle of Qadisiyah, the wife of Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, Salma radiallahu ta'ala anha, she hears Abu Mihjan crying loudly. So she thinks to herself that something happened to him. So she runs to the chamber to see what happened with Abu Mihjan radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And she says, what's wrong? Mabik. And he started to say again, لا تحرمني من خدمة الله. Don't forbid me from serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me go and fight with them. Salma said, how am I supposed to let you go fight with them? My husband, who is the commander of the army, he tied you up. What will assure me that you will come back? And so he said, I swear by Allah, if you let me go, I will wrap my face, I will serve in the battle of Qadisiyah, I will come back, I will tie myself back up, and I will never tell anyone what I did. She believed him. She saw the ikhlas, and that's just the firas of the mu'min. She could see the truthfulness in what Abu Mihjan was saying, so she freed Abu Mihjan, he went to the battle of Qadisiyah, he wrapped his face, and he fought so bravely, that Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, as he was watching the battle, he was wondering, who is this man? And so after the battle was over, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu gathered, and he said, where is the warrior that had his face wrapped? Where is he at so that we can nuthni alayhi, so he can praise him and we can reward him, make dua for him? And no one came forward. So Sa'ad radiallahu anhu was confused, who was that man? Abu Mihjan went back to Salma, he tied himself back up, and he never told anyone. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he came back from the battle of Qadisiyah, and he came back to his wife. We were in the battle of Qadisiyah, and he's saying there was this man that had his face wrapped, and that fought so bravely. And when I called and asked people who he was, no one came forward. And she said, do you want to know who that was? That was your prisoner. Abu Mihjan, Sa'ad radiallahu anhu was so shocked. Said, how did he come? I tied him up. She said, I let him go. And he came back. So Sa'ad radiallahu anhu entered upon Abu Mihjan, and he was breathing hard. And he had wounds all over his body. 
And Sa'ad radiallahu anhu, he started to cry. And he hugged Abu Mihjan. And he said in the ear of Abu Mihjan, he said, Wallahi, I will never lash you again, even if you drink. After this action of yours, and of course he was saying it as a means of expression. I can't lash you ever again. Abu Mihjan, he cried. And he said, Ya Sa'ad, Wallahi, I will never return to drinking alcohol again. And he never did. Why? Because he realized that there was a cause that was greater than him. I don't have time to worry about my khamr and my sins and these trivial things in life. I've got an ummah that has expectations of me. And we as an ummah, Allah Azza wa Jal has expectations of us.